It's October the 8th. And it's 2023. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durnford. I'm also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. Ooh, that's a little long, is still a little coffee. I'm going to cover the bizarre assertion that the International Atomic Energy Agency actually has a safety standard. It's hard to comprehend that they would say something like that. When you look at the biggest picture of the whole narrative. International Atomic Energy Agency admitted on June 2nd, 2011, that their standards, safe radiation standards, are based on natural radiation, not man-made, not stuff from nuclear missiles or nuclear reactors or nuclear fuel, but based on bananas and potato chips. That's what their standards are based on. In other words, there's no standard. And hence is why over the years, you'll see stuff like that. Right, so I put that together to remind myself how sadistic and twisted and hateful and dangerous the nuclear industry actually is. And then to welcome in the newest, latest, greatest itineration of scumbags, Raphael Grossi, I jimmied him a picture into that story there, which is appropriate. Uh, 14 prefectures in Japan, 14 prefectures were banned by 55 countries. Not by the International Atomic Energy Agency, but by 55 countries. Because the reactors were destroyed. This is one of four. Uh, this is the mixed oxide fuel reactor. Now, if, they had, if the International Atomic Energy Agency had standards, there's zero possibility they would sit silent while Japan grew billions of pounds of rice every year, nonstop. They never stopped. Right alongside of one-ton bags of radiation, where well, there's 30 million of these one-ton bags, by the way, that, we, that they admit to, and barely, and that they're growing it in the middle of the nuclear wasteland surrounded by 14 prefectures that are nuclear wastelands. There is no standards. If the International Atomic Energy Agency had a standard, then they wouldn't have depleted uranium munitions. All of it is very easy to comprehend if you're honest. Ernie Gunnarsson couldn't get away with pretending the building didn't exist and pretending it looks like that. There's no way that he can get away with something like now, that. Now, I built, the division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. And Unit 4 it has always been my biggest concern. If you watched our website, on the very first week of the accident, I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, you'd have to evacuate Tokyo. Well, Unit 4 is to the right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, doesn't that constitute a fire? And it looks like this, not like the... Now, I put both of those pictures there, but Arnie Gunnarsson has promoted the picture to your left. If the International Atomic Energy Agency had standards, then 93 days after the nuclear meltdown started and will never probably end, Canada lifted restrictions on food from the nuclear wasteland, on the entire country actually, after 93 days while 55 countries banned it for 10 years. And then they got replaced and they removed the restrictions in the majority of them. There's 14 countries currently without restrictions. If the International Atomic Energy Agency had safety standards, and they don't, 
then they would warn you that the fuel pools at the top of the buildings are gone and the reactor cores are gone. In reactor four, reactor three, reactor two, and reactor one, because that information is easy to find and that if the International Atomic Energy Agency had standards, it's so laughable, unfortunately, it's, and terrifyingly, if they had standards, the International Atomic Energy Agency would have been forced to come out and say that the world media, the Western media, in 2013 and 2014, wasn't actually in Reactor 4 or even Japan. And the United States have 70 of these reactors, and that's where they shot the videos to them, in the United States, which means you can't trust the nuclear power plants in America to, cut, to not cut your throat, right? And if the International Atomic Energy Agency had standards, which they don't, This model is based upon 16 days of radioactive fallout from France. And the numbers you're talking about is around 10 million becquels a square meter. So this model stops 16 days later on the 31st, I believe, of uh, March 2011. I'm sorry, 26th. 26th. In other words, 15 days later, and 10 days after the last reactor blew up. Another study showed a million becquels of xenon 133 covering the entire northern hemisphere. So you had 10 million becquels of cesium-137 from France's model covering the northern hemisphere per square meter. That's just fallout. That's not uh, airborne. That's just fallout. The plume model showed a million becquels of xenon-133 covering the northern hemisphere, 20 million particles, radio and particles are nasty stuff, of the radioactive iodine-131 per liter, per liter. It would have been 10 times more iodine-132, 30 times more iodine-133, 31 times more iodine-129, rather. So let me do that again. <laughs> I think I said it 129 too many times. So for every iodine-131, there's 10, to 10 times more 132 iodines, 30 times more 133 iodines, and 31 times more iodine-129 for every iodine-131 that's produced. And then you can do similar extractions for all the other isotopes that are obviously dispersed into the environment. So the fuel pools were at the top of the building and the reactor cores. Reactor 3 is obvious. It's very. I show you those pictures because it's very obvious, I would hope. I show you this one because it's overly obvious that they're not in the building they're claiming they are. They're claiming they're in reactor four fuel pool. The building doesn't even exist. So you have cesium-137, xenon-133, iodine-121, and by proxy 132-133s. And then you have 220 million atoms per liter of iodine-129. And so we're talking about saturating the thyroid glands of all the species, which means mutating hormones and stem cells for children and small creatures and animals and everything else. Uh, I, I have done extensive research, Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska. Four to five months a year, you're getting the guts torn out of me. And I was attacked and vilified, demonized the entire time. I was on the well, ocean. Well, we got the big one up. Uh, and the research that I've done is unassailable. This is, this is unapproachable. This is un incontestable documentation, period. And by the way, that's what it usually looks like. And this is what this is only two of the four reactors, and, that, and by proxy, that's four fuel pools that are missing. Four fuel pools. 
four fuel pools. Each fuel pool could have had up to around five or six reactor cores in each fuel pool. There's two at the top of each building. And it wasn't designed to hold this kind of quantity because uh, one of the pools was for transferring it, wait for it to cool down and move it to the storage pool eventually, right? But they don't have a repository in Japan or anywhere else worldwide. So the radioactive fallout covered the entire planet. And this model, the Norwegian Institute of Air Research, is 19 and a half days. So the research that I'd done showed us, because we went back year after year, that the species were wiped out to your left. You'll never take that picture again post Fukushima. You, you'll never take this picture. You'll never see those species again. The pictures to your left are exterminated due to the perpetual radioactive fallout from multiple nuclear reactor buildings with decades of reactor cores dispersal into the environment. And so we are in desperate times and pretending this didn't happen is the quickest way to destroy the future of all species, whatever might survive. Now, the pictures to your right, I went back year after year, they didn't recover. The species to your left didn't come back. At the same time, they're shipping billions of pounds worldwide from the nuclear wasteland. And this has just absurd amount of adverse side effects. So there's many, many illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. There's heart problems and liver problems and lung problems and respiratory and pituitary and thyroid, adrenaline, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, Down syndrome, schizophrenia. And this is why they faked it. This is actually omnicide we're watching. Where they, uh, they're exterminating all the species. This is not population control. This is extermination. This is France's model shown around 10, it's, it's more than 10 million times after Fukushima of the cesium-137. And so you'll see a lot of models like this where the rad ocean is radioactive. This model is only based on nine days of radioactive fallout from the, to the 18th. So it's only based on eight days of fallout from the first reactor, but only a couple of days from the last reactor to detonate. This model is the Neptunium-239 dispersal covering the planet. And again, let me remind you what's at stake here. It's the future of all life on this planet. And it should be treated with the dignity and the respect that it deserves. And sitting in silence is the worst option. Now, when you think about all these prefectures, the 14 prefectures highlighted to your left, there's actually more than that that were banned worldwide. That was just from one story that circulated through all the major medias for about two weeks. Farmers harvesting food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation. And so you're going to have some serious adverse side effects from something like that, let alone the perpetual radioactive fallout, right? 865,000 cancers in the first year, give or take a few months. 865,000 excess cancers. So not everybody has health care. Not everybody was diagnosed. And they're well aware of nuclear and its perpetual emissions. They understand how nuclear is uptake by food. So it's shocking that they grow it in the nuclear wasteland right alongside of the one ton bags of radiation. And another shocking thing you might want to consider is why are almost all nuclear power plants worldwide surrounded by farms. 
And the reason of that is because the fuel pools in these reactor buildings have no containment. The fuel is still splitting atoms. And so this is hideous. This is the absolute worst case scenario conceivable. And they've been, they got an 80 year jump on you. And so if you're wondering where all the insects and birds and mammals and animals are gone, look no further than 80 years of nuclear. And Fukushima was the event, was the tipping point, was the pulse event that broke the planet's back. And we know it because we went out and done the research. International Atomic Energy Agency admits there's no such thing as a safe level of radiation. So how can you have a standard that allows the stuff I already showed you? How can you have a standard that ignores all the darkest warning signs available? 11 becquels a kilogram, this is radiation and the health specialist. Children with over 11 becquels a kilogram of cesium start to see heart problems start to see heart problems at 11 Beckwell. So you can put, and think of a Beckwell as an atom, a radioactive atom pulsing energy every second, almost at the speed of light. Do you know anything out there that travels almost at the speed of light besides light? Nothing, right? But radiation is energy. It's not like a flashlight. It's not like the lights in your room. This wrecks your chromosomes, your DNA, your cells in every direction of the explosions every second. And your body can't keep up with that kind of damage. You can't repair everything every second. And so it's, it slowly starts to creep up on your immune system. Uh, but as pre-Fukushima, post-Fukushima, there's so much of it. So you can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, you can't see it. It's a billion, billion atoms makes up the head of a needle. So 200 million atoms, you, you physically can't see it. 11 of them will cause children, so you can't perceive it, you can't smell it or taste it. Or, and then you have to also worry about irreversible heart damage at 50 becquels a kilogram. You gotta worry about how all farms or all nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms. And there's lots of experts acknowledging that nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists. In fact, it's considered two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. In adults, 50 becquels a kilogram in humans lead to irreversible lesions in the vital organs. And an agreement between the International Atomic Energy and the World Health Organization, which is the same organization in the United Nations, which is nothing, it's United Nations, United Nations in misery. United in misery is the, um, what I meant to say. The World Health Organization cannot research health effects of radiation or the effects of nuclear accidents if the International Atomic Energy Agency does not agree. In fact, um, Congress, parliaments, don't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you with radiation. If, if it was illegal to poison you with radiation, they couldn't use it in hospitals to kill you. And so uh, we never done a show on Thursday, as most people just around here regularly knows Thursday was my birthday. I haven't taken a birthday off since um, 2011, Fukushima's major event, but I was really sick. And we barely got in little shows last week, but I managed to keep like half an hour shows going. And um, just before I try to go do the show here today, I'm not allowed to go live anymore. Hackers have blocked me from my live streams that I've been doing for over a decade from the nuclear industry. And so now I have to shoot the video 
render the video, post the video, and ren rendering is not too bad. It takes an hour, I'm sorry, it takes less than an hour, usually around 40 minutes to render these videos because they're coming out at around 100 gigabytes when I shoot them in the studio because the equipment I got is high end, right? And so then I got to crunch it down to about a gigabyte. And when it uploads, it takes uh, close to an hour to render back to high quality. So it takes me roughly an extra five hours a day or more to shoot the same shows that I've always shot for the last decade. Because the nuclear industry decided if they can do it, they would, and they did. I'm sorry. I wanted to show you uh, Congress lacks the authority to make it illegal. There was a guy who was a protester ex-candidate to plead guilty to seek a nuclear material would not get a prison deal. A noted Madison protester, former congressional candidate, who was arrested last year after the FBI said they caught him trying to buy radioactive material online, purportedly to kill someone will plead guilty to one of the charges against him, but would not serve any time in prison under a plea deal, a plea deal. Why are you getting a plea deal for trying to get dangerous, dirty bombs? Well, his lawyers filed a motion, a serious motion, dismisses the indictments against Ryan, asserting the nuclear terrorism charge under which Ryan was charged is unconstitutional. It's unconstitutional. Because Congress lacks the authority to criminalize poisoning with radioactive substances. Congress and parliaments and governments worldwide don't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you with radiation, but 100% has the authority to make it illegal to poison you with anything else. And radiation, that authority should be given to Congress and parliaments because it's considered two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. So just inhaling one hot particle and everything coming from a nuclear reactor is a hot particle can cause a cancer or 1,800 diseases. And when you compromise the immune system because you're consuming it or breathing it and drinking it or all of it, then you compromise your immune system. system. You're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. So one of the most scariest things conceivable is the fact that almost every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms. And that they know that the plants and food is uptaken the radiation because you have perpetual, just absurd amount of studies showing so. And you know that children are, it's not 10 to 100 times higher than adults, it's 1,000 to 10,000 times higher than an adult. And it's not just cancer, there's around 18. It's, it's the actual medical textbook has been shown to be applicable to the radioactive fallout poisoning because it's two billion times more toxic than industrial poison, right? So when you compromise your immune system, you're more susceptible to everything. Even a common flu could take you out once you compromise your immune system. And notice how the farms are always right up tight to the nuclear disease factories. And now the whole planet is one great big stupid disease factory thanks to Fukushima. It causes strokes and heart diseases, liver and lung and respiratory and pituitary and thyroid. And so when you poison a thyroid, for instance, you're talking about mutated hormones, perpetual mutated hormones, 
And the shocking numbers of children with thyroid issues in Japan was stunning. It was around 358, when you scale it up, it's 358,000, 35.8% of a million when you scale it up. Pre-nuclear meltdown was one in a million, maybe two randomly. Why are they growing all this food right alongside of the disease factories, right? And then the numbers on the West Coast after 18 days, Yeah, the, that's the French government model, by the way. Yeah, the 18th of March, which is seven days after the tsunami and just two days after the last reactor exploded. So that model, you can imagine what that's going to look like. It's going to look like this after about 20 days. Well, it actually looks a lot worse than that. We got the actual video models. So 11 beckles a kilogram of cesium, you start to see heart problems. But what about all the other fission products? They all have the exact same attributes. It's 2 billion times more toxic than industrial poison. This is a Cellophil, I believe, in the United Kingdom. It's hard to comprehend how big the site actually is. Over a thousand buildings. If you decommission a building a year, it'll take them a thousand years. And that's about the pace they can go at because you're talking huge, despicable amounts of radiation. And it's surrounded by farms now for 70 years. It's hard to comprehend, uh, I'm pretty sure for the average person, how insidiously evil this industry got to be to even do that once, let alone every single reactor on the planet. Inhaling just one radioactive hot particle can cause a cancer. Well, they know the f it's uptake in your fruit, in your food, in your berries, particularly your mushrooms. You want to avoid mushrooms. You want to avoid berries. And I'm not kidding you. You can pretend I'm wrong, but you're making a fatal mistake. And this just drives me nuts when I see playgrounds right alongside the nuclear disease factories. Because that's the only way you can describe a nuclear power plant is a disease factory. 50 becquels a kilogram in humans lead to irreversible lesions. It doesn't just stop there. And by the way, that's, just, that's nasty what we're talking about. It doesn't just stop there. Why are all the farms surrounded, or all the nuclear power plants surrounded by farms? And Japan allegedly says that their food uh, is going to be below 100 becquels a kilogram. 111 becquels a kilogram is, is fatal to children. 50 becquels a kilogram is fatal to adults, to the health of them, and ultimately to their life. And if you keep consuming it, every time you consume it, you are stacking the misery machine against you. Now, it's, it's interesting because when you see these farms or, that are sur surrounding nuclear power plants, they, they knew absolutely 100 billion, just millions of studies showing how food uptakes radiation. So why would you do that? Well, because there's no opposition, that Greenpeace and the rest of them, which are controlled opposition, like beyond nuclear, Greenpeace, their job is to lead you to the poison well, which is nuclear itself. Nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists. So why surround them with farms? And, Fu and Fukushima was a pulse event. Again, uh, most of the time I only show you these two reactors because I feel that you need to see some stuff on your own. So you'll find reactor one and reactor two. But you can't deny reactor four is gone. You can't deny reactor three are gone. You can't deny it. 
if you're honest, even a little tiny bit honest, you got to admit that we're in real trouble because that's what this spells out, right? This, this is real trouble. And 220 million atoms of one isotope, 20 million atoms of another isotope, a million atoms of another isotope. Model after model after model. This was the Xenon 133. And there's different models, one at a million becquels a square meter, another one at f almost 500,000 becquels a square meter, separate independent studies. 16,000 homeless people quit. Not nuclear scientists, not nuclear academics, not nuclear corporations, not nuclear alumni. The World Health Organization had a ridiculous high number for children before they get pills. Japan raised the number 75 times higher. So there could be no way to save themselves. Evil is real and it's called nuclear. So the steam coming out of the ground is fatal doses right away at 4.7 sieverts. It's actually 10 sieverts in six places where so reactor one and two, some of the reactor cores in one, well, the reac reactor core itself in one looks like it went China syndrome down into the earth, so to speak. The fuel pool and reactor in reactor two building went China syndrome. A lot of this stuff burnt off or for the first couple of days. The rest of it went China syndrome. And so this hit the water table and called the earth to causes the earth to split. And the steam is, is not always visible, right? These are the lethal doses. That's Chernobyl over there. This is Fukushima, just one of the four reactors. And, and Chernobyl never had any fuel pools. Fukushima, each of the buildings had fuel pools at the top of the buildings. So what they decided to do was pretend that it never happened. That's, that's a great solution, isn't it? Doesn't that give you confidence? And because they got away with it, then they put, there's no limit to how evil, right? There's no incentive anymore not to be evil. And so they went full on evil. And the current itineration of the media has completely turned their back on humanity. Doomsday-like radiation, if a fire in the pool at Unit 4 would be a global catastrophe. It, there is no fuel. The fuel pool is long gone. They, and they refuse to acknowledge the building looks like this. They categorically refuse it. And they went as far as major absurd amount of Western medias pretending they're in a building that doesn't even exist. So how do you claw back control from something that evil? It's hard to comprehend the evil of this industry on your own, unfortunately. And because I've been at it f from the inception of Fukushima in particular, I was at it a decade before that. So Boris Johnson removed the restrictions on the food from the nuclear wasteland that was banned by 55 countries from 14, in 14 prefectures for a decade. Boris Johnson removed the restrictions for baby food and for cereal from the very middle of the nuclear wasteland for two and a half years before they removed restrictions, Boris removed restrictions for the rest of the population in the United Kingdom. And if that's not evil, then you need to go back to school and get your money back. Radioactive material from the reactor is two billion times more toxic than industrial poisons. And harm caused by nuclear disaster is greater than any other work of man. And radiation is like explosions going off in your cells and blows holes through your DNA. 
Dr. Bill McBride, UCLA School of Medicine Vice Chair of Radiation Research. You get long-term immune dysfunction. And if you inject flu viruses in the mice, it'll eventually kill the irradiated animals. In normal animals, is not the case. So the immune system is compromised for long periods of time after the exposures. And Japan is one great big stupid exposure and ultimately exposed the entire planet. Now you notice I have Fukushima radioactive fallout is global warming. Now it's not just Fukushima, it's 80 years. The emissions from the nuclear meltdowns and nuclear emissions from the thousand fuel pools worldwide every day, it never goes away. And the only way I can explain it, hopefully it works for you, is if you imagine Imagine this is a snowstorm, and at the end of about 20 days, in this case is 16, at the end of 16 days, the whole planet is covered in a snowstorm. The snow never melts, and it never stops snowing for a million years. So that's radiation, but get rid of snow and call it radiation. And you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't hear it or feel it or touch it or pick it up or perceive it, but it's brutal on all species, not just humans. Always, always reflect on the fact that it attacks all species with equal enthusiasm. Then you can appreciate why I welcomed Raphael Grossi to the new seat at the Degenerate International Atomic Energy Agency with that particular depiction. And you can also then appreciate why I put this captions here. Because you've got 80 years of journalists trying to convince you, and obviously succeeded many, many times, that Fukushima was somehow harmless and innocuous and benign. Send us people who don't mind dying. Those 16 older should be prepared to die at Fukushima disease factory. Concerned half of Japan to be covered in nuclear waste, which was a valid concern because they knew that happened. 60 and older should be prepared to die at your power plant. All of them, too. Tokyo Vice Governor suggested a Fukushima draft. We all of Japan must face it. All of Japan must face it. Um, so Orchard Island in Taiwan just had a typhoon with 342 kilometers, kilometers an hour, 212 miles per hour winds. This is provisionally the highest gust ever recorded in Asia. It's simply not true. And you're talking about a gust of, um, I think it was like the gust or an extra 70 miles per hour. The highest recorded are all post Fukushima. Because you got invisible plumes, and I meant to explain to that to you a little bit earlier, you got you have plumes covering the entire planet, pulsing energy every second for millions of years. Gas, oil, and coal emissions don't have that attribute. That's global warming, see? It was a comment I left on a story earlier this morning. But bear with me now. I'm going to change gears a little bit. And I still got the flu. I still got the bloody flu. 
Not so bad, but it definitely loses my wind sometimes. But we're so we're in so much trouble, and we're so late to the fight that somebody has to be out here and rally the population. And it probably won't succeed. I will try my best. But it looks like the population is fairly indoctrinated. And where's all the patriots to worldwide? You know, that we're going to deal with this scum if he ever showed up. Well, guess what? They showed up. And on August the 24th, they hacked my computer. They hacked my computer. And they hacked my computer. They killed one of my hard drives. They disabled my ability to live stream. So a lot of the material I've gathered up is now missing from what I call the pile. And because I've been at this for so long, I have piles of, where, of what I call go-to piles with an absurd amount of documentation, a ridiculous amount of documentation. And... and um, Here we go, let's start here. Seventy percent of Japan is polluted. It's, it turns out it's a hundred percent of Japan is polluted. It's a hundred percent of a hundred percent. And, and the rest of the planet is polluted too. Work at Fukushima plant to go on for 10,000 years. 10,000 years. Hang on, I'm almost ready. I was so sick today, I wasn't even gonna do a live show. And then I came to my senses and said, well, do something. If you get sick, then you can just stop. But try your best, Dana. And thank goodness for common sense settled in. So they picked up around 30 million one-ton bags of high-level radiation across Fukushima Prefecture itself. They're burning a, over a billion pounds of radioactive debris to grind it up and took to other prefectures. Tokyo can't get rid of the sewage, the sediment from the water filtration facilities, the ashes from the incinerators, because it's so radioactive. So it's so bad that your f sediment from your filtration, water filtration, you can't get rid of it, which means all your pipes are irradiated. And then everybody drank that water or bathed it or consumed it. And so right now, the only thing that's saving me is uh, I'm using chunks of lime. And today, I'm, I'm, I'm just squeezing the lime to get more right away into it and uh, lemons, rather. And then I'm putting in a spoonful of lime or so and a lot of ice cubes to cool down my throat so I can actually talk. And so, so far, we got away with the video. We'll keep going. Let me go backwards. People on the West Coast had a right to be worried. It's not just flowing into the ocean, it's airborne, right? I showed quite a lot of those models already. I won't. A massive amount of debris off Hawaii. 
had to be there. Just perpetual line of radiation. Dolphins washed up with heart problems and stomach lumps. Uh, scientists want a new flood of radioactive particles from Fukushima. Those who escaped the initial fallout could now be exposed. People in coastal areas are particular risk. Die off of mammals, birds, and reptiles in Western United States. So many diseases afflicting such a wide variety of animals that the names are out of science fiction thrillers, hemorrhagic diseases, syvactic plagues. And the only thing all of this has in common is Fukushima. Fukushima is the one that binds us together. So, I just want you to comprehend the latest story. This is really interesting. It's July the 13th, the official story came out, where they said the amount of radiation that got out of the buildings, four buildings that don't exist anymore, that had around approximately 10 million pounds in each building because they don't have a repository anywhere in the world, let alone Japan. So they claimed that everything that got out of four buildings like this was only equal to one sixteenth of that kind a year is all that's got out. 0 0.06 grams is uh, it's 2.2 grams of a total. But each year they said they're going to release 0 0.06 grams, which would be one sixteenth of that co one gram coin. Is the official story is all that got out of the buildings that don't even exist anymore. So the fact that they're willing, and I mean, the buildings blew up. They threw the reactor cores and the fuel pools right out of the buildings. And by 26 days later, the whole planet was covered in radioactive fallout. So they switched gears and now they're denying that anything got out of the buildings because they don't want the nuclear industry to be blamed for the extermination of all the species and the majority of humanity. When you say radioactive contaminants could remain a valid concern for years, you're talking roughly a million years. Nuclear professor, yeah, worry about what they're doing at Fukushima. One mistake from the disaster. Another quake to be the final blow from Japan. Guess what? They had many, many quakes since. 28% of the polar bears with skin lesions and hair loss, thyroid tests by the government, uh, like the symptoms in seals and walruses, and a surprisingly high mortality of musoxes, weak immune systems suspected, which is typical of radiation poisoning, and a high rate of embryo deaths and bad eggs for geese. So we're, we slowly were able to paint this picture. Intense mystery of sea stars were wiped out along the west coast. And that's the right word too, wiped out. There was around 84 species. Each species came in highly vibrant colors. They were exterminated. Columnists, the truth must be told. Fukushima is a major global threat to all living flora and fauna. And Gunnarsson, for what Gunnarsson done, for that betrayal, there really should be a penalty that exceeds the typical penalties. What Gunner, Arnie Gunnarsson done was the most, one of the most cowardly, despicable betrayals conceivable. Uh, let me just give you some. So this is, I, I put, I put Arnie's uh, video. Now he's going to claim in this video, I'm going to show you in a second, that they went in the reactor four. Not only is he said that they go in the reactor four, but they put enormous amounts of supports under the fuel pools at the top of the buildings that actually don't even exist. 
Now, Ernie made the racks, 40 assemblies in the fuel pools for 70 identical reactors in the United States. Um, the Unit 4 was, um, uh, was damaged twice. It was damaged by, by a st all of the earthquakes that occurred. And it was also uh, damaged by a series of explosions over um, the first week or two of the, of the accident. So the, the, the building is structurally weakened. Now, Tokyo Electric's acknowledged that. They went in in, uh, in May and June of last year. This is more than a year ago. And put an enormous number of extra structural supports directly under the fuel pool to keep the bottom of the pool from breaking through. Now, how do you put structural supports under a building that actually doesn't exist anymore? He's still out there telling the same lies. His wife, Megan Gunderson, was a spokesperson for the nuclear industry for two decades. The truth must be told, Fukushima is a major global threat to all living life. The new and improved version of the original atomic plague is spreading and that the truth is so incomprehensible it's easier to pretend that it doesn't exist. Hundreds of sea turtles washing, washing up dead on the Pacific coast. Dogs stopped breathing and died almost instantly. Starfish turned to slime. Now, I documented it for six years, four to five months a year on the ocean. It, it's, it was horrifying. And the people that are working at the plant are the homeless and the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language. They're not nuclear scientists. They're not nuclear academics. They're not nuclear alumni. They're not nuclear corporations. The betrayal is complete on this planet right currently. Sardine populations plummeted along the US West Coast. Collapse of species feared well, now we know it's true, right? It did collapse. Uh, David Suzuki, Fukushima is the most terrifying situation that he can imagine. And he's seen a paper which said it's bye-bye Japan and to evacuate the North America's West Coast, Canada, United States, Mexico, if Unit 4 goes after the quake and the rods are exposed. Well, the rods are at the top of the building. The building doesn't exist anymore. He was forced to retract the statement, he said. All he had to do, though, was show that picture. That's all he had to do. Sailor's horrific journey goes viral. Uh, this is a seasoned sailor who races multi-million dollar boats across the Pacific each year for decades. And he was horrified. There was no birds. There was no, um, no life whatsoever. So, like the plutonium, which is named after devil, is pretty scary. But the biggest byproduct of radiated fuel rods is curium isotopes. And curium isotopes, you need lead sheeling 20 times thicker, 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium, which is, and curium is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods. After we left this uh, story with the uh, sailor, 
after we left Japan, it felt as if the ocean itself was dead. Nothing alive for over 3,000 miles. We no longer saw turtles or dolphins or sharks or birds. And one whale with a big tumor on his head. Here in Canada in 2013, that the pink salmon are canary yellow. Inside, are, they're also yellow. Hearts, parts, gills, spines, cartilages in the head, spleens, swollen, liver, spotted, somewhat bugged out eyes. And this was a uh, hundred different samples they had done. Complete collapse of sardine population on the west coast of Canada. And the starfish got a lot of prominence because they were such visible in tidal zones and then they got wiped out. And in the most brutal way, they melted because they use salt water is the same way as we use blood. So the radiation flowed through their interior. They turned into goo. We documented it. That documentation is up at uh, nuclearproctologist.org. And we have the GPSs of all these places that I've done the research with. It was and it was really something how I was attacked every day, all day long online. It was, it was a huge concerted effort to smear me, and they succeeded, literally almost 100%. And there's just those who seen beyond the lies that are still around today. And we're very grateful to those, by the way. Japan's experts must be allowed to report health consequences of Fukushima. The official data is all denial. Leaked Godzilla trailer featured voice of nuclear pioneer. Now I've become death, the destroyer of worlds. Now I've become death destroyers of worlds. Now I have become death to destroyer of worlds. Official blast is Japan's government over Fukushima. Such immoral people that they let the radioactive substances flow out freely and said nothing. It's just absurd and now they're trying to cover the whole thing up. And and of course they did, right? They went, and, and I mean, they went to help. The cover-up came out July the 13th. So according, since July the 13th, and it came originally out of South Korea, but it, all, even International Atomic Energy Agency is claiming that nothing got out of it, and that each year it's equivalent to chopping up those few flakes of salt to your right 22 times, divide the flakes to the right 22 times, and that's what's getting out each year from buildings that don't even exist. Typical myths not working on plan to stop Fukushima. Well, how can you stop something that disappeared after day five? Everything was gone after day five. Like once, say, Reactor 3, once Reactor 3 exploded, that's gone. That's not coming back. That's gone. It's gone. And so you see Reactor 3 to your left? It's all gone. 
So, again, perpetual laws, what does lying do? Imagine the cop pulls you over, you're driving down the road, you're speeding and you're smoking stuff you shouldn't be smoking, you got a beer in your hand and... Um, and what else? How can we make it even worse? You're naked from the waist down. You're parked in front of a primary school. And so the police pull up on behind you. You look in the mirror and you said, no problem. I can talk my way out of this. So the cop pulls up and he, he says, well, you're smoking marijuana. And he said, no, that's, that's a cigarette. He said, well, you're drinking alcohol, open alcohol. That's an open alcohol container. He said, no, that's just apple juice. And you're naked from the waist down, sir, and in front of a primary school. And he said, well, actually, it's not really a school anymore. It's just today there happened to be a bunch of kids hanging out in that area. And uh, it's not, uh, I'm not naked from the waist down. I just chose not to wear clothing. And so the police say, okay, well, have a nice day. Sorry to bother you. Do you think that'll happen? Do you think the police might look a little deeper? So the claim the building doesn't exist, they're not working on a plan to stop something that don't exist, eh? Multiple reactors don't exist anymore. And each of these reactors is equaled um, not counting the fuel pools at the top of the building, because these reactors were pure uranium, pure plutonium. Pure uranium, pure plutonium. Chernobyl reactor was mostly a graphite, which is completely different than uranium and plutonium. And, and Chernobyl was brutal. That was brutal, but it ain't nothing compared to a single reactor in Japan. So if you take just the reactor itself, because it's pure uranium and pure plutonium, not counting the 8 to 12 fuel pools stored at the top, reactor cores stored in the fuel pools at the top, then just the single reactor core is worse than all nuclear meltdowns combined on the planet. All nuclear... I just hate when people text me over and over... And I just should turn the phone off. It's not their fault, right? But I don't like turning the phone off, right? For obvious reasons. I might make an exception here in a few minutes. So the buildings are got around 10 reactors in them, reactor cores, because you don't have a repository anywhere on the planet to store this stuff. So each building is equal to maybe a thousand Chernobyls. Each reactor is equal to around a hundred Chernobyls because it's pure uranium, pure plutonium. Reactor three is the exception, is infinitely worse. This was a mixed oxide fuel reactor. And MOX fuel, and take a good look at this creature, MOX fuel is where you took hot fuel and uh, hot fuel and you blew it out of the buildings. TEPCO admits not working on plan to stop Fukushima radioactive releases. TEPCO researcher says it's impossible to contain radioactive wastewater leaking from Fukushima plant. Japan government has lost all credibility. It won't continue to hit for decades, it'll continue to hit for millions of years. It's impossible to remove the molten cores for hundreds of years, if ever. You can't remove it because it's blown right out of the building. Like. If they're not going to be honest, how can you have a conversation? 
and they're, they're refusing to be honest because everybody that I'm quoting knows what the buildings look like. Right? They're, they're not in the dark. I'm not special. I don't have, I'm not the only person that has access to all this information. The whole industry has, is doing everything it can to wreck the planet. So it disarmed you, made it impossible for anybody out there, unless they find me, to see the documentation, because you're not going to see it anywhere else. That, that to me, is the scariest thing imaginable. TEPCO admits not working on a plan to stop Fukushima radioactive leaks. TEPCO is not a decommissioned authority. TEPCO has no right to be on the site after the meltdown. They have no, they have no, like, imagine if you bring your car to the mechanic and the mechanic says, well, I'm a little short on employees, but I'll go find some, we'll get to work on your car. So he goes down to the homeless shelter, gets a couple of homeless people and brings them back and says, well, figure it out. That's what we're talking about. Or even worse, it's a jet. And you bring a couple of homeless people and says, figure it out. Because that's what we're talking about. Tep Tep TEPCO is not a decommissioned authority or an authority in nuclear in any other way either. TEPCO researcher, TEPCO researcher, which is the strangest connotation imaginable, says it's impossible to contain the radioactive wastewater, and then to call it leaking, to call, to call that leaking, every time I see the word leaking, I'm disgusted. I hate these people a hundred thousand times more. The flow of contamination from the plant will be virtually impossible to stop. Probably the only true statement you'll see from them. Fears are mounting that Fukushima radiation could lead to dangerous contamination levels in seafood from the Pacific. In seafood from the Pacific, the whole planet is covered in radiation for God's sakes. Fukushima radioactive tanks may have already been emptied into the Pacific Ocean. Fukushima radioactive tanks may have already been emptied into the ocean. Not may have been. The, the, you can't put anything in the tanks. And I don't mind explaining the tanks to you, so give me a minute and we'll, I'll dig up the documentation because you desperately need to know what that actually means. And I'm your boy to tell you. Most people get offended when you call them boy. I don't get offended anymore. What's the point, right? I'm your boy. It's supposed to be just a joke, like a, to put a smile on your face, hopefully. Because it's pretty hard to find anything to smile about when it comes to nuclear. There's lots to grimace about, but there's very little to smile about. 2014, three years later, TEPCO can't bring the contaminated water under control. The advanced liquid processing system is yet to function reliably. In other words, it doesn't work ever. That's three years later, it didn't work. So did they put everything in the tanks for three years? Well, they also had an Areva system, which is the same as the ELP system. The ELP system didn't work. The Areva system, three and a half years later, August 2014, still unused and kept out of operation. 
Well, there's no filtration. They're going to build a bypass operation so water coming down the mountain can be pumped around. That way it wouldn't run through the site and into the ocean because that's what it does. You can't contain it. Officially now, everything is in tanks. And there's only 2.2 grams. And officials admit that groundwater bypass operation failed to reduce the tons of water. Like, we're not talking tons. We're talking 100,000 tons a day that runs past under the site. The site is built on an old riverbed, which means it's been there for millenniums. And so it's well established. And so what they done was built it up with shale and crushed rock, and they love doing that. And the idea is if it melts down, it goes down and lands on the riverbed, and that flushes the elements out into the ocean and contains the meltdown from splitting the earth open and everything else. But it actually doesn't even work that way. It's guaranteed to destroy the planet ultimately. TEPCO failed to deliver on a promise to install a fence to restrict the contamination. Well, you can't build a fence. And, and even if you got a billion dollars, which is what they said they needed to do it, it can't be done. I'm going to explain it to you, maybe, just in case you're on the fence or something. How do you build a fence to stop the emissions i got a better way of doing it. How do you build a fence to stop that? How do you build a fence to stop the plume from covering the whole planet? How does that actually work? And then an ice wall? Really? Really? You built an ice wall. And not progressing. Typical mist, the ice wall will not stop the groundwater from entering crippled reactors. Well, just hang on, there's a part actually missing from that story. I might find it, I might not. I'm pretty good if I can. I need a picture to show up so I know, oh, luck would have it. Nuclear industry is it's insane, the only way you can describe it. High-priced Fukushima ice wall nears completion, but the effects uh, effectiveness is doubtful. A total of 260,000 people worked on creating the ice wall. 260,000 people. So... Look up the money that was allocated for the ice wall, because the final number is out there. It's easy to find, right? Divided by 260,000 people, and if you paid everybody $1,243 each, there's no money left over to build the ice wall. And, w and so what's going on here? Because that's obviously not a true story, is it? Well, a true story is simple. It won't stop the groundwater. And that, the official story now is only 2.2 grams got out. A new map of radioactive iodine released from Fukushima Daiichi. This was the Americans flew over shortly after. I'm not sure if there's a date. Well, this was told, the story was told later. They recorded aerial radiation surveys a thousand feet above the ground. And this was uh, within the first week or something, I believe. And he went up to 20 kilometers away from the plant. And he showed iodine levels at 3 million becquels per square meter from an aircraft flying over at 1,000 feet above the ground. So imagine how much energy this stuff has when you're able to make these guesstimates like that with the equipment they're using. So these are extraordinary numbers, but what they're doing is no, nowhere near honest. It's the furthest thing. They're currently moving people into little tiny sections of Futaba, Nami, and Okuma, and Tomoka, and Naraha, and Hirano. 
these are nuclear wastelands. They, they call it no-go zones, but everybody else worldwide calls it a nuclear wasteland. So there's also the Siri system, the Kurian systems, which are water filtration systems. TEPCO plans to dump water stored 2013 at, at Fukushima. Now, as I just showed you, there, now the tanks were all built in 2013 and the first part of 2014. So the official story is that everything was kept in the tanks, for, right? And I showed you that the filtration systems didn't work in the first three and a half years. That's incontestable documentation. So the amount that they said is going into the tanks is equal to a garden hose split four ways. If you split a garden hose four ways, a garden hose. Everybody got a garden hose that has a house? If you split a garden hose four ways and take each of those four ways and spray one of them full time into each building, it's about 140 tons a day. And that's the number they're talking about. It's such an absurd story, but it's not if you don't understand nuclear, right? If you say to somebody, hey, I want you to help me move 140 tons, they're going to laugh at you because that's a lot of work, right? So they kind of think of it that way, 140 tons. But it's not that at all. The buildings are completely saturated. The buildings are saturated. TEPCO plans to dump water stored at Fukushima Daiichi into the Pacific. The plant has already released enormous amounts of highly contaminated water directly into the ocean from a plethora of leaks from the reactor buildings. The plant has already released enormous amounts of highly contaminated water from a plethora of leaks from the reactor buildings. And in 2013, that's the last time you heard of the Siri system. Fukushima radioactive tanks may be already emptied into the ocean. Not may have. It's constant. Nothing is in the tanks. The tanks are empty. They can't filter it. And you're talking about 2.2 sieverts per liter. And we're only acknowledging better. Three sieverts is considered a lethal dose. So if you store that kind of radiation, it's going to be much higher than that from buildings that no longer exist on top of that, into these uh, tanks that were only built to last a couple of years. As soon as you fill up one tank, you can never build another tank on site. Nuclear-friendly journalists, it's shocking. We don't know where the fuel is at any of the three reactors that had melted down at Fukushima. In the history of science, we've never seen anything like this Fukushima plume heading across the Pacific to the US and Canada. Well, again, that's true. That's a 100 true statement. Why is Japan allowed to get away with contaminating the ocean? Because the International Atomic Energy doesn't have any standards. They're not even a regulatory agency. They don't have the authority on top of that. They don't have any sovereignty over any country. And that the plume covered the planet in 26 days. In 26 days. Radioactive water is pouring out every day, every day, all day. You can't contain it. 
It's important to think of the worst case scenario and that Fukushima is built on a river, which I just explained to you a few minutes ago. Fukushima contamination is serious international environmental issues and that the crisis concerns the core interests of the people who share the planet. Test seafood for Fukushima contamination. Continuous input for two years and counting will lead to ample opportunity for reconcentrations up the food chain. Simply not enough being done on this side of the Pacific. Fukushima contamination is a serious international environmental crisis. Official story is the buildings didn't melt down, only 2.2 grams have gotten out of the buildings that actually don't even exist anymore. And that those 2.2 grams is considered tritium. Tritium. Oh, to be a tritium. Let me just explain that to you. So Billings blew up. Uh, there's evidence in reactor three and four, there's nothing left whatsoever. They put these contraptions on top of it and then claimed that they got all the fuel out of the reactor buildings. And when you think about the bags, there's 30 million that we know about. There was 105,000 on-site storage, but the official story is only 2.2 grams is all that got out, which doesn't explain why there's 30 million one-ton bags and why they're growing food right alongside of it, does it? doesn't explain it at all. Let me just look for that. Uh, so this came out on July the 13th, this year, 2023. This is, the author is a professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering in South Korea. That's quite a prestigious place, isn't it? Nuclear and quantum engineering. Nuclear and quantum engineering. He said the discharge is like throwing a sugar cube into the ocean of three grams. Like throwing three sugar cubes into the Pacific Ocean. This is a friggin' nuclear... A professor in the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering a professor saying that multiple nuclear meltdowns is equal to three grams of sugar and that the total discharges are equal to 2.2 grams of tritium with 0 0.062 grams released each year from buildings that don't even exist anymore and that had millions and millions of pounds in each building. So when you see these journalists pretending in 2013, folks, two years after, in 2014, pretending they're in a building that don't exist, I mean, any academic on the planet that looks at the buildings, the original footage, knows the reactors are gone. There's not a single journalist on the planet that can't work that out. They know the difference. They got all this, these years and years of lies, right? Multiple buildings gone, plumes covering the entire planet, major media pretending they're in the buildings that don't exist. Everybody's doing their part to cut your throat, and there's a lot of them. There's an absurd 
if you take both of the buildings and you stack both of them on top of each other, that that top part up right there, which is the bottom part right here. So that bottom part right alongside of me right there is the top part of that. And that top part is taller than both of these buildings stacked on top of each other. And so both of these should have been razed all the way to the ground, but they left it there so they could hoodwink you, so they can manipulate you, so they can destroy your future and the future of the eight million species. F f you know, for a paycheck, of course. Some people won't do for a paycheck. When you pick up 30 million one-ton bags, like when I'd done the research expeditions, this was the most kelp I found. Now normally there's around 600 algae. There's only four right there. This is right by Alaska. It's right by Alaska, and on the outside of the island, you just can't get in there. But when you go to the back of the island, which is, because there's 27,000 islands. So 27, my apologies, 27,000 islands. I'll get down there. I think this is, uh, yeah, I was coming back into Queen Charlotte City in Haida Gwaii, formerly known as the Queen Charlotte Islands. Uh, this is treacherous, unbelievably treacherous areas. It's a hideously treacherous area. And a couple of days before that, oh, I don't know, that's a different time. There was another tree. Oh my God, why is the audio jumped like that? Hail again today. Oh, I got that. That that was when I I washed up on the rocks. So to change the prop. So to change the prop. And it started hailing again. <laughs> Well, I got an hour and a half, two hours sleep, I guess. Well, that engine right there, the Yamaha, the night before I flipped that upside down with that boat, that's the small Zodiac. I flipped that upside down in a hurricane. I got caught in where I was too. I couldn't get a forecast. And next thing you know, I washed up on the rocks. That's a different picture from a different day. But that's what the prop looked like. By the time I got off the rocks, that's what I had left of a prop. <laughs> and I dragged anchor. I never had no anchor till daylight. I had to wait till daylight uh, to get the anchors back. And so I, I, I coasted around this little bay all night during a hurricane. The wind would blow you like crazy. So every minute and a half, I would have to try to jog back out. And this is what my prop looked like. And I was going to run it up on the beaches. And I decided not to. Because I wasn't... Uh, I wanted to get out of there at daylight. But I needed my anchors to make it back to port. Yeah, it was pretty trying times for me. I didn't think I was going to survive... I didn't think I was going to survive that night. And, and the nuclear industry is exceptional in the complete callousness of what they do. Growing food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation. I can't comprehend how we ever got to that stage. I just can't comprehend it. And there's no one's going to explain it to me so I can figure it out, or, or understand it, rather. But I can't comprehend why they're so evil. I just can't comprehend it. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So 
Outside the fence, that's far, far away from the fence, there's actually 105,000 sites just like that. But because we emitted so much radiation into the environment from so many, I mean, 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. There was another interesting story you might, CCM with 180 times the limit found in fish at Fukushima nuke plant 12 years after. CCM had 180 times the limit found in fish at Fukushima nuclear plant 12 years after the disaster. So when I read the story, to my absolute horror, here's the story. This wasn't that long ago, uh, July the 19th. Remember, the official cover story came out July the 13th of this year. They had put, now they claimed nothing got out. There was no explosions. There's no bags. There's no emissions. It's only 2.2 grams. And that started on July the 13th because we covered this seven days a week for years and years and years. And so when I seen this story, I was like, really, they're going to tell the truth? And I was like, nah, that's not likely. So then I never seen these pictures before. This is the K drain, each outlet, the Fukushima site. The two outlets on the right are B drain each and on the left, C drain each. And they're out in front of this place here. And you notice the pump stations are covered in a green slime. That's a regent that bonds with the fuel particulates because they're still splitting the atoms. So this drainage is coming off the site. Now remember, the official story is there's 140 tons a day coming out, being pumped through the site. But it all goes into the tanks after it's filtered. That's the official story. So a garden hose, does that look like a garden hose to anybody? Does that look like a garden hose to anybody? Does the one over there look like a garden hose to anybody? CC-137, up to 130,000 becquels per kilogram. This suggests that CC-137 is the only isotope coming from multiple nuclear meltdowns. Like anybody that utters those words should have their tongue cut out as far as I'm concerned. A typical public relation official, the worst of the worst of the human species, by the way, Suggested that the high levels of cesium, to suggest there's only cesium, um, let's put it that way, they wouldn't say that to my face, detected in black rock fish is partially attributed to water discharge from the K drainages and the sediment inside the breakwater. Well, what about the meltdowns? Netting was installed across the port's entrance you like this. And one of the measures to prevent the fish from getting out in place since February 2013. In 2016, nets were also set up within the inner breakwater. And for that reason, TEPCO did not conduct periodical checks of radioactive substance concentrations in fish inhabiting the breakwater for about six years. Do you get it? But after a heavily contaminated fish was found off Fukushima Prefecture, apparently after it got away from the plant's port. So they're claiming that the only radioactive fish in the ocean are the ones that got out of the little port in front of this place. A total of three black rockfish that apparently escaped the port have been caught more than 10 kilometers 
from the Fukushima plant since commercial shipment restrictions on the species were lifted in January 2017. And this is the story by the Fukushima Bureau. My goodness, evil has no limits, and the nuclear industry is as evil as you get. How many bags do you think is just in this one spot? You see all those tarps? That's one ton bags. That's what those tarps are, one ton bags. One ton bags. Millions and millions and millions of one ton bags. And they're so, there's no, there's no uh, checks and balances. There's no incentive not to be evil. And because everybody sits in silence and lets them get away with it, then the entire planet now has been compromised by perpetual radioactive fallout. The entire planet has been compromised. You've got all the media pretending they're in a building that actually doesn't even exist. And so why is the world sitting in silence? And I've been providing this documentation nonstop for years and years and years. Typically five days a week. Last week, I was brutally sick with the flu. And I'm still sick today, but I'm doing way better, thank goodness. And, and better is good enough. I just, I hate my phone. <laughs> Listen to that thing. That's disgusting. Here's no. TEPCO. TEPCO is going to try to convince you that the building doesn't look like that. Right? They're going to try to convince you it looks like this. Now, he's talking to the press club in Washington, and not a single person has questioned no. these assertions. Of course, my died stage, the, right after the accident, uh, it was, of course, the uh, emergency condition. But uh, right now, uh, gradually, gradually, uh, it became the uh, decommissioning stage, a more stable decommissioning stage. And that's that, the, as I mentioned, uh, the successful uh, completion of the uh, uh, dismantle of the uh, spent fuel from the unit four. Now uh, it's about a 15, 33 uh, bundle from the unit four. And uh, we carefully uh, manipulate uh, the machine and successfully remove the, uh, those fuel to the uh, ground pool, ground located pool. Uh, so here's the official cover story right there. And so this is the building right here. The building's not right there, right? The building's right here. In fact, the building's down here somewhere. And, but the reality of it is, that's the building. There's nothing left. So they put the cover, just con not cover, but contraption on it. The contraption doesn't physically touch the building. You can see the cutaway over there in the corner of the building. There's nothing physical left. The reactor cores are at the very top of the building. Don't worry if you don't get it yet. I'm only going to tell it to you 10,000 more times. Because it's a story that has to be told. Whatever it takes is going to take. And we are going to win the battle. <coughs> the planet will come to its senses. Because ultimately, when you look at it, it's, it's absurd that they go through all of that trouble to manipulate you <coughs> over a lousy couple of buildings. The only problem is the radioactive fallout 
is a genocide machine. Oh, I'm sorry, omnicide machine. It kills all the species. And so this TEPCO disgusting parasite claiming that the building looks like that when the building actually looks like this. For me, it's almost too much to bear. I see my nostrils are getting plugged up again on me here. Apologize to everybody. So the building doesn't physically touch the other building. See the cutaway over there? Just in case. A little difficult, uh, some people understand, but you can see how it's cut away. So the building, Arnie Cunningham claims, they went and put support under the fuel pool. The building doesn't even exist. So inside, there's nothing. They put these panels, are, are put in there by gravity. Right, there, there's, there's nobody physically in the building. You can see the buildings are melted down. See the roof of the buildings down below are covered in debris and sprayed. The green is the regions they sprayed on it. The, this, this is the back side. That's the ocean on the other side. So when you zoom in on it, there, there is nothing left, right? And I, I just love it. And look at the stuff on the pipes over there, right? Why didn't you pick up all of that stuff before you done that? <laughs> so when you zoom in on it, you quickly realize there's more to the story. That they're actually not in a building that don't exist. And it's the same thing for Reactor 3. And because Reactor 3 and Reactor 4 reactors, not just Reactor 3 and Reactor 4, it's Reactor 1 and Reactor 2, there's strong evidence to suggest that the common spin fuel pool, which is behind reactor four is, and reactor three, but basically directly behind reactor four, the common spin fuel pool had reactor cores from all six reactors. And the evidence that came out in 2020, 2021, the 10th anniversary, was 730 uh, plus video pictures released from a drone. And when you zoomed in on it, the pictures were all pixelated. And reactor, or the common spin fuel pool, the four reactors we're aware of were all redacted. But interestingly, the common spin fuel pool was completely redacted. And so was reactor six, and the pump house and the stack were all redacted. That's reactor six up there. That's all redacted. And the pump house is right there. That's all redacted. And the stack over there is redacted. This was the dry storage. This is at basically at sea level of all the stupid places you can put a spot. And so we assume a lot of that washed out to sea. And this is just before the dry storage, or just after it, rather. So you can see the enormous amount of energy we're talking about. So to suggest that this never had any adverse effects is not being realistic. This is the common spent fuel pool. The common spent fuel pool is right behind reactor four. And so right behind it down, reactor four is up there. You can't see it, but it's right across from the common spent fuel pool. What you're looking at is transport truck containers over there stacked up. That's where the water funneled in. And it's at the same level. And so uh, this is common spent fuel pool here. And that's reactor four there. The next one is reactor three. The far one down there you can see, but it's still redacted out in front of it is reactor two. Uh, I might as well explain that to you while I'm here. So that's reactor two, but look at all, everything is pixelated. So when I zoomed in on these pictures the first time, I was, I was confused. I was like, what, wait, what? Oh my God, it's all redacted. Everything is redacted. Reactor three and reactor four, and common spent fuel pool right here is all redacted. And you won't see these pictures or hear that story anywhere else on the entire planet. 
Why did they redact everything out in front of reactor two? That's reactor one. That's the common, again, that's the common spent fuel pool, and that's reactor four. Why was all of that redacted? And so this is one of the first pictures where I had started to zoom in with the drone. It was lucky for us. But, the, you know, why did they release that pictures? I found the pictures at a Chinese site, and they all linked to TEPCO's website, and they had just been released. And it was a small story, and I just I translated it. And I was reading the story, and it wasn't making any sense. And so they had links to pictures from Fukushima to TEPCO, so I clicked on it. And I started downloading all kinds of pictures. I think it was 10 different links or something. They were all at TEPCO's website. I went and downloaded them all. And I said, well, this ought to be fun. And so the original pictures were zoomed back even a little bit further. And you couldn't tell everything was redacted. So I was, I was trying to wrap my mind around what I was looking at. And I said, my God, everything is redacted. And so I went through all the pictures, zoomed in on every picture. I set up a show for that night. And then I went online looking for other people talking about it. And I couldn't believe nobody was talking about it. So like that was a warning. That was in your face warning at the 10 year anniversary. And these were TEPCO's website. This is TEPCO's website. Everything was redacted. So when, when you look at the media, what goes through your mind? We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi New... Now again, remember, that's Reactor 4 to your left. Imagine her family members watching this video. We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011, leading to the country's worst nuclear disaster. The country's, it's the world's worst nuclear disaster many, many times over. South Korea opposition went to protest the tritium. Not protest fake in the buildings, not protest the actual inventories lost from the reactors, but to protest tritium. And by proxy, then they had hundreds of thousands of people in so this is so Korean in opposition, the Democratic Party. There was hundreds of thousands of the Democrat or the population protested for weeks and weeks and weeks, are still protesting today. So even the original footage of Reactor 3, there's not a nuclear scientist anywhere on the entire planet that doesn't know the building is gone. There's not a single one. There's not a single scientist. Even Noah, an American, a knowledge that the radioactive fallout, now this is based on venting, it's not based on the documentation that I showed you, it's actually only based on venting. It's based on venting. And so, to suggest that they're venting, I, I think it's stunning that major medias have all came out. So you, you had to have the videographers, the producers, the makeup artists, you had to have the supervisors, you had to have the executives all play a part for that to work. You had to have everybody at CBS, every employee at BBC, every employee at CNN, every employee at ABC in Australia, every employee at all those medias, there's many, many more, had to participate in that lie for that lie to work. Every newspaper had to say the same story for that lie to work. Every university, every academic, every professor, everybody, every nuclear student had to participate in that lie for that lie to work and still be the dominant story today. And all of them had to ignore me. 
So over the years, originally I had done over 600 radio interviews and interviews online. But uh, if that doesn't turn your guts, growing food in a nuclear wasteland, surrounded by nuclear wastelands, and UN have vehemently come out and denied there was any adverse side effects. This was United Nations, or this was UNSCLEAR, which is United Nations. So the third line is the average disposition of cesium-137. The reason you use cesium-137 is strictly to manipulate you and deceive you and trick you and to make you complacent. United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation, also known as UNSCLEAR. Average disposition. So you see all those towns to your left? And the third one, the second line is population. The third line is just cesium because nothing else exists apparently. UN comes in and says there's no adverse side effects despite 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. And despite the fact that, that all of these communities should be abandoned, 55 becquerels a square feet, a square meter, is an evacuation zone pre-Fukushima. So they're living in nuclear wastelands, they're breathing it perpetually, the children are tricked and manipulated into staying there with the help of UN, with the sanction of UN and all the nuclear industries worldwide. Uh, Japan, by the way, is the third biggest funder of uh, International Atomic Energy Agency. All these communities are nuclear wastelands. And none of them are abandoned. They continue to grow food directly in the nuclear wastelands. And all of these nuclear wastelands are surrounded by millions of tons of one, one ton bags of radiation. The, the list, like the tanks were built to trick you. The tanks were actually empty. They lost all the inventories right away. The tanks are there strictly to manipulate you and to put you in a position where you don't protect yourself. You don't try. You put your blind fate in an industry that has every intention of destroying your future. The International Atomic Energy Agency's role is to analyze and confirm the data provided by TEPCO, not directly collect samples and verify them. And for the first 12 years, the International Atomic Energy Agency didn't visit Fukushima. It visited them five times this year in the 13th year. And all of those are this year, 2023. It was to promote the water and the 30 million one-ton bags being reused. Right, the International Atomic Energy Agency says the public's trust is the key to projects using radioactive soil. The 30 million one-ton bags, like what are you talking about? Why would you do something like that? How can you get that evil? Why are you so hateful? The International Atomic Energy Agency is not a regular regulator and therefore not in a position to judge or approve Japan's soil recycling project. It's not in a position to judge or approve. Not in a position to judge or approve. So they're not a regulator. And it's a very special night. International Atomic Energy Agency, Ralphiel Grossi. When he handed them a report, based on, on genocide and omnicide, not based on factual information. Uh, the former prime minister, or the current prime minister, the current, I think South Korea has a president, right? right. The current president of South Korea, where the official story of 2.2 grams of tritium came from on July the 13th of this year, and that his next day after being elected got his picture taken in front of a nuclear power station with the nuclear power plant workers. 
Young, Young Sung Yo sparks controversy by denying there was a radiation leak in the Fukushima nuclear disaster. He was a former prosecutor and that there was basically no radiation leak from the nuclear plant in Japan because the reactors themselves didn't collapse. So the president of South Korea is claiming that didn't happen too. Oh. Well, I think my throat finally uh, lasted. Got us through the show, and that's a great start. So you got, I remind you, you got 105,000 sites in 2019 to admit to. 105,000 sites like that of one ton bags. 105,000 sites. So Korea came out July the 13th. A Department of Nuclear Quantum Engineering professor and said it's like three grams of sugar and that the total releases will be over 30 years, 2.2 grams of tritium. And don't worry, it's in the thousand tanks. But when we counted the tanks, we can only find 750 if you include the little small ones. So forget the 30 million one-ton bags. We're not allowed to say that anymore because a university said we can't. We can't acknowledge the nuclear plants melted down and lost their entire inventories. That's considered taboo. We're not allowed to say that they're not in a building that don't exist, despite the fact they're in a building that doesn't exist. But the building actually looks like Look to your left. It doesn't look like that. It never did, and never will again, rather. And the radioactive fallout covered the planet, all kinds of different isotopes. And the only one that now is uh, the official story is 2.2 grams of tritium. And these 30 million one-ton bags are not full of tritium. And some are arguing, say 60 million. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil. In 105,000 different sites. In 105,000 different sites. And the scary part to all of it is the entire nuclear industry will cut my throat as as a freebie, as a favor to the nuclear degenerate industry. They'll happily cut my throat and yours just so they can promote the degenerate nuclear industry. And they do. You got all these journalists pretending they're in a building that doesn't even exist anymore. It doesn't even exist anymore. Okay, so that's what we got for Sunday night. Got to go get this rendered. Got to get it uploaded. I may f get it turned into high quality before you guys can watch it. It's another three hours work or so ahead of me to get to that stage. Not sure what the poll is going to be tonight. Should the International Atomic Energy Agency be charged with crimes against humanity? Hopefully I remember to write that, but remember it'll be a few hours before I write the poll. I got so much work to do before the shows finally shows up on your side. Uh, James Lucid donated a stunning $320 on Wednesday. And um, about $180 worth of, of uh, stuff for the truck, because we've got to put the truck back and change all the oil and some of the fluids and add, add some additives for the engine, for some of the other engines. Tomorrow I'm hoping to try to get the boat running. We also bought, I also bought a um, 750 
pound capacity bumper carrier, you know, those plug in to your trailer hitch carriers so that you can lug stuff around. I, I finally got one of them that I desperately should have bought years ago, and but we got a great price on them. The brand new from from a shop and uh, there's three different options here. I went for the 750 pound capacity because you know I got so much shit I'm gonna need it right and that'll save some wear and tear on the vehicle. The vehicle is running perfect. It's running better than it's ever ran for probably three or four years. <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, surprised. It's amazing gas mileage from it now. It's quiet. It idles at 550 RPMs. And so I'm, I'm unbelievably grateful to have that fixed and running again. What a disaster. What a bloody disaster. So let's, we got a lot of work to do. Let's get back at it as best I can say. We got still got the fall. We can get a bunch of work done. We got easterly winds. It's going to be blowing in from the Atlantic Ocean. Well, it's been doing that for about four days, so the seas are pretty, ground swells are pretty good because it's coming right off the North Atlantic, right? And, uh, the right thing for me to do is go to the other side of the peninsula, which is about 100 kilometers away, and put the boat in the water over there. But that motor has been to Alaska six times. Um, it's hard for me to trust that motor with all the trouble we had from it. And I, I, when I went out the last time, we couldn't get it to run. And so that's what i got to try to do tomorrow, is get that motor working again. Uh, but I, I'm out of, I ran out of energy because I had the flu for the last week and I'm still not doing that good. My throat is still raw. I'm pretty happy that we got a full show in the night though. And um, see everybody tomorrow night. We'll keep at it. You know me. There is no quit. It's always second gear straight ahead. The slight detours, but we always get right back on track again. We got an obligation to humanity and the species to keep the story moving forward, and hopefully the world comes to its senses. And it won't be because of lack of us trying. We still have to document the die-off, do the species counts. We have a total failure of the colonies this year again a four to 10% survival rate. It just came out last week that the puffin colonies all starved to death. It's just not right. Regardless, have a great night, a great day tomorrow. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody on the next show. Have a great night. I'll see you on the show. I'm always in the show, folks. You have a great night. We'll see everybody in a bit.